All right, ladies and gentlemen, good to see you back. Finally, there is this conjunction again, which happens almost once a year. What conjunction is that? Well, it's the conjunction of Saturn and Venus. Saturn and Venus will be starting their conjunction from 22nd of uh, January this year in another two days and they will be conjunct till 15th of February. And on 15th February, Venus will enter uh, its exaltation sign, which is the sign of Pisces, right? And Saturn, as you know, has recently changed his sign finally uh, from Capricorn to Aquarius. And he will remain in Aquarius now. He won't be retrograde again and he won't go into Capricorn. So this transit is a very uh, interesting transit because if you see from the connections, Saturn and Venus are both natural friends, yet they are poles apart. It's very, it's a very weird combination. You know, when, whenever you think of Saturn and Venus, I mean, everybody wants Venus. Nobody will want Saturn. Nobody likes Saturn. Everybody likes Venus, right? What does Venus represent? Venus represents Love, romance, relationships, compatibility, uh, something which is very soothing, something which is very refined, something which is very fine, which is like very pleasurable, which uh, makes you happy, not like happy uh, in a sattvic way, but can be orbit uh, in a rajasic sense. Now, Venus can show marriage, partnerships, relationships, you know, like perfumes, you know, luxury items, vehicles, you know, fine dining, all these things, food, right? Exotic foods. And then we have Saturn. Uh, what is Saturn? <laughs> Everybody knows what is Saturn, right? No, I need to tell what Saturn is, but let's remind ourselves of the basics, right? So Saturn represents hard work, discipline, um, having patience, uh, doing whatever it takes, right? Uh, putting efforts or whatever, all these things. That Saturn, from a negative perspective, shows things which are discarded, shows people who are discarded, right? Sometimes. And Saturn shows things which you, you don't like to keep yourself around it. You like to keep them at bay, right? And Saturn can show weakness basically, right? Weakness, not uh, internal weakness, but can sometimes show external weakness, you know, like somebody is very old, right? Now, because of that, what happens? You know, it's like the body is dwindling and there's no energy and you you can't be the best version of yourself, right? When you're old. So, and by old, I don't mean like 60s or maybe even 70s these days. This can mean like, you know, 80s or 90s. It means, you know, diseases, even if you're young, but you have a disease, you know, you can't, you can't just be yourself. Like you can't, you can't be normal. You can't do things which you can do otherwise, right? So that is why, Everybody wants to keep Saturn away from them. And he's also, uh, if you see the farthest planet, right, uh, in the solar system. I mean, of course, um, from a theoretical perspective, we can say that. But now what happens when these two planets, they come together? And not only are they coming together, they're also coming together in the sign of Aquarius, which is actually the mool tricorn sign of Saturn, which is the second best sign for Saturn after the exaltation, which happens in the sign of Libra. Now, this is an, another interesting uh, point that Saturn gets exalted in Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus. And now the Lord of Libra is coming to, uh, to Saturn's house and they are together. So what does this, how does this equation fit in? How does this uh, weird conjunction, like, how does this fit in? Because generally, if you see Saturn Venus, what is the standard dictum? You know, Saturn Venus conjunct or either Saturn is aspecting Venus from its his third aspect, seventh aspect, or the tenth aspect. 
either ways in all the four situations <coughs> sorry the standard dictum is there is suffering in relationships because saturn represents delays disappointment setback you know heartbreaks and all these things so when connected to venus of course now delays and disappointment setbacks with relationships that's what basically it's like heartbreaks right and you want to marry somebody, but you are not able to marry that person, you know, either, either either for some reason, external reason, or that person doesn't like you back. Saturn Venus can show one-sided uh, love affairs which do not culminate into a relationship. Or it does, or it can show two-way relationships, partnerships, but it does not culminate into marriage and or now, even if it culminates, you know, the marriage ends or even if it culminates, it doesn't end. One partner is no more or something like unhappiness and separation in relationships because Saturn is also a natural malefic. He's also separative. So now what happens when these two come together? It's a very a peculiar situation, but at the same time, they're natural friends. So... If you see, there are two standard dictums of astrology. One is, you know, conjunction of natural friend, friends are always good. Uh, but there's another dictum also which says that conjunction or aspect of Saturn with any other planet is not good because then Saturn transfers the aspects of misery to that planet and especially to Venus. And Saturn, Venus, Saturn, Mercury, these are very difficult conjunctions to study because if you see the two planets that are orbiting around the sun in close proximity is none other than mercury and venus most uh, they're like in so much close proximity what does this mean i mean astronomically we know they are very close but what does it mean philosophically philosophically it means the surya which is the atma which is what we think of ourselves to be. Atma can refer to that spiritual soul, but in general, the word Atma also refers to the self. So, what are those two things which are oscillating, revolving around the sun, right? Around the Atma, it is Mercury and Venus. Now, what's Mercury? Mercury is wealth. It is... Mercury is the prince. So what happens, you know, in, if, if you think, visualize the life of a prince, it's full of, you know, enjoyment and uh, it's full of having a lot of contacts. It's full of being influential. It's having the ability to make right decisions at right time. It's the ability to have good connections. It's the ability to get things done through either yourself or by using leverage through others and become wealthy eventually and what is that uh, venus venus represents buying luxuries using the assets which you get through mercury right so saturn mercury saturn venus these are very very tricky uh, combinations because uh, imagine the atma which is surrounded by wealth and uh, enjoyment and venus so Mercury at its highest form represents wealth because you may have connections, you may do whatever you want, right? You may use leverage or whatever, but ultimately if it's not adding to your wealth, it's not much of value from a Mercurian perspective, right? You say, oh, I have maybe a thousand people that I know in my business, but nobody is ready to buy your product. Then what's the use, right? What's the use of having those contacts? I mean, you can always say that, oh, no, no, one day, you know, something can happen, but we are talking of business here, which is like a day-to-day -day affair. So Mercury at the highest sense represents uh, money. And Venus at the highest sense, I mean, on a mundane platform, represents sexual pleasure. So if you if you talk of uh, the Atma, you will see people, they're always obsessed with two things. Either it's Mercury or Venus or most likely it's both. So when uh, Saturn and Venus are conjunct, it's like saying... You you want to enjoy, but then the problem is there is hindrance. Now, if there is hindrance, how is this a good conjunction? 
Now, from a philosophical perspective, we understand that there is difficulty and there is unhappiness and sorrow, sadness, misery with Venus. But if you see from a perspective of natural friends, this is a good conjunction. Now, how, how, how does it happen? So, it means that whenever Saturn and Venus are conjunct, we are realistic towards our approach of luxuries in life. We are realistic towards the approach of relationships in life. We will understand. See, what happens? It's a, it, it can be a very beautiful thing, you know. When... Imagine when a man and a woman are, you know, getting together, you know, they're initially, you know, like falling in love or, you know, falling in lust with each other. <laughs> then, then what happens? The mind exaggerates everything, right? The mind exaggerates everything in a good way. So, for example, uh, if, if a man is, you know, getting obsessed with a lady, then... Anything and everything that this lady does, he will feel, oh, she's so nice, you know. Yeah, she has some flaws, but, you know, at the end of the day, everybody has flaws, right? So, what's the big deal there, you know? I mean, she's almost perfect, right? Every man feels, you know, that uh, that girl is perfect, right? But, and it's the same uh, the other way around. The girl may also feel, wow, it's just, he's the man of my dreams. You know, when am I going to get married to this person, right? When will... That they come, right? So the man and woman, you know, they are planning for marriage and, you know, sensual enjoyment, love, romance and all this. But what happens? After they stay for some time or, you know, after they get married, what happens? You know, they their flight crashes. <laughs> they crash into the uh, bottomless pit of reality, which is the material world, which is Saturn. So Saturn, Venus is like the situation of a couple who has stayed, you know, uh, married for one or two years, right? Or maybe in today's Kaliuga, they have been in a relationship for one or two years. So what happens? All the butterflies disappear, you know, the person becomes very normal for you. And then you start feeling, oh my God, why is this person having so much flaws? How terrible is this person? Because now... You just see the other person for as it is, as he or she is. So then what happens is we become disappointed because we thought that this person is something or somebody, but now it seems this person is not. And that makes our life very painful because we feel we have paid such a big price because we assumed this person is somebody, but... It seems this person is not, right? Or maybe sometimes exactly the opposite of who we assumed, right? <laughs> so then what happens is that we feel that life becomes stressful or life is like a burden in some way in that particular area of life. And when things go wrong, we lose our minds in that area of life. But why is that eventually good? Because... If if you are always in that, you know, euphoria of, you know, that initial meeting um, and, you know, initial obsession, then what happens is we will not be able to see through the reality. We won't be able to see through who that person is actually. And <clears throat> unless we see the person as it is, we cannot actually develop true affection. That is not possible. Because initially that uh, romance and that passion which is there, that's not real actually because <clears throat> that is based on a intrinsic assumption that this person is perfect or maybe perfect for me, not for everybody or for others, but for me, he or she is perfect. So then what happens is we overlook everything that this person does wrong as they say, you know, red flags. <laughs> I'm also wearing this red hoodie. <laughs> so you overlook all the red flags. And then that's why, you know, when I talk to people, my friends I see, I do, when I do consultations, I always see somebody is displaying all the red, whatever, you know, black or gray flags. <laughs> and you tell this person, oh, you know, she's doing like this. Maybe she's not a good match for you or maybe 
he's behaving in a wrong way maybe you should consider but what what their mind says oh no 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 you are just finding faults you know it's she's perfect he's perfect it's you maybe you are jealous that i am with this person that is why you are saying all this right or maybe the person will change you know after i marry or i convince the person the person is going to change right so then what happens is we cannot develop real affection because that's not true uh, self of the person and then eventually we uh, see the other side of the person and we realize uh, things are quite the other way around and then finally what happens we uh, have a realistic assumption about the person and then we love the person for who they are originally not for who we thought that they were or they were, they should have been or they could have been right he should have been like this he could have been like this no but he is like this she is like this so now can you love the person if yes the relationship works or else as in kaliuga things are rampant and separation is rampant and then people part ways right so saturn venus actually teach, teaches you true love basically true love doesn't mean at a spiritual level it's still materialistic but now i will love you for who you are not not for who i thought you should have been right or who i imagined you to be that's more of like venus rahu or venus moon you know it's like always searching for that perfection but saturn venus is see why do they say saturn venus is the significator of separation why do they say why because whenever saturn venus are conjunct you will very soon see the reality of the person very 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 soon you will all your hopes will be shattered regarding your imaginations of how this person will be physically mentally emotionally intellectually spiritually you will be struck hard by reality and then can you continue most of the people can't that is why they say this is the significator of separation but <clears throat> actually it is not because it tells you that either you will stay with this person as who or she, as who he or she is or else you don't so it's like a test which uh, we have to pass through and if you fail this test uh, well then it was never really a uh, uh, love at a deeper level it was just you know physical obsession basically that is why people separate of course there could be other issues you know like intellectual incompatibility lifestyles may not match and all of this but mostly it is because you know the idea of this person that we created in our head is not the one who this person is actually and what is aquarius aquarius is the sign of ideas thoughts belief systems it's how we relate our belief systems also because belief systems and thought processes come from leo which is directly opposite but how do you relate to somebody else who has a different belief system so therefore saturn venus conjunction in aquarius can be a very good time to resolve your differences and to come to a negotiation and what kind of negotiation is it because they say the best form of negotiation is when both parties leave the table with some dissatisfaction considerable dissatisfaction that's what is <clears throat> a good negotiation if one party says oh i am very happy with this negotiation right it means the other party was very unhappy so therefore when there is this conjunction till Fe february 15th now it's a good time for us to see how there is difference of ideals among uh, both of us husband wife or you know, partners and then how can we see the world from each other's perspective because leo aquarius axis is all about perspectives i think this way you think this way you think that way but what about both of us can we make this work so it's a very mature form of understanding which you can develop through this conjunction otherwise uh, this conjunction is a conjunction which will which can give you a lot of clash of ideals but now see venus carries the energy of libra which is you know 
trying to settle things, you know, trying to maintain peace and harmony. That's what Libra is. And then Saturn gets exalted there because when you have to do some uh, negotiation, when you have to maintain peace, you have to be humble. You have to give up your ego. That is the place where you have to give up your ego. There is no, there is no question of negotiation without giving up your ego. And that is why sun gets debilitated in the sign of Libra, but Saturn gets exalted there. And when Saturn gets exalted, there is a higher possibility of doing a negotiation, maintaining the peace, you know, keeping the balance. Of course, this doesn't mean that you have to tolerate nonsense and uh, pay heed to uh, your partner's behavior if they are just doing nonsense and doing uh, not making any sense, right? But if you feel that uh, there are certain things which you can see from each other's perspectives and come to a truce, come to a negotiation, then this is the time you got to do it because now you... Saturn Venus is like X-ray. You are directly seeing the person for who the person is. So now it's your choice. You want to keep it or break it. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you will find my webpage down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.